NASA is canceling its Lunar Science Rover, and I'm pretty mad about it. So is a lot of people in the space community, but there might be a way to still save it. At a press briefing yesterday afternoon, NASA announced that it's canceling Viper, which I always have to look it up, Volatiles Investigating Polar Exploration Rover. It was a continuation of another mission that was canceled that I'll get into. The important part about Viper was that it is already built. It was actually in the beginning stages of environmental testing so that it could launch. It was originally going to be 2023, then it was going to be the end of 2024, then it slipped to 2025. Those slips, those schedule slips, are what caused a cost estimate increase which triggered an automatic review. The budget for Viper was approved at about $433.5 million, and the estimated cost of the lander that would take it, that's the Griffin lander, Astrobotic is the company that won the award by NASA to deliver a lander on the surface of the moon. I'll talk about Peregrine in a moment, you might remember that, but Griffin is the one, the larger lander, that was contracted to deliver Viper to the surface of the moon. That contract was 235.6 million, and that's separate from Viper. But because of various delays, they talked about supply chain delays, the current estimated budget for Viper is 609.6 million dollars so a little over 600 million dollars and nasa was concerned as it begins this environmental testing that viper might come across problems that would increase that cost estimate even more and make it an even more expensive mission this for some reason doesn't matter when we're talking about other larger nasa missions where they just keep funneling money toward it i'm thinking of sls i'm thinking of orion i'm thinking of mars sample return i'm thinking of even james webb space telescope there is definitely a tiered system in NASA's mind of what's important to get that extra funding to fly the mission. NASA has already spent $450 million on this mission and they're not done spending money. They have to actually ramp down the program. So NASA estimates it will only save $84 million. They spent almost half a billion dollars on this rover and they're only planning to save $84 million. That may sound like a lot of money, but anything under $100 million is actually pretty small for NASA. Like, really not even worth talking about. So the very fact that they are wanting to cancel this mission and save so little amount of money tells me one, that this was a very difficult decision for them to make and tells me two, something else is going on that they hadn't been talking about. The rover has already been built and I'm gonna talk about some of the uses for that rover that already exists a little bit later. But first I do wanna get into the fact that I actually thought that this mission would not be canceled. I thought that Viper would be moved to a different mission. So if you remember back in January, Astrobotic launched its first lunar lander, the Peregrine lander. Due to a technical problem, it did not get a chance to land on the moon. It did test some of the equipment that was on board, some of the experiments, some of the sensors, but it did not get a chance to land on the moon. Because of that, I expected Astrobotic to do more tests to really improve their systems before they flew Peregrine again and before they chose to fly their even larger Griffin lander. I thought NASA would take Viper off of Astrobotic's first Griffin mission and put it on a different mission or put it on a later Griffin mission. I did not see the cancellation coming. Sounds like a lot of people didn't either. That Griffin mission, because of all of the Astrobotic technical difficulties, actually slipped to the fall of 2025. And these are independent slips. So the Griffin mission slips are independent of the Viper mission slips. They just happen to coincide. Viper was also looking at a slippage until the fall of 2025. So regardless of what happens with Viper, even though Viper is currently set to be canceled, Griffin is gonna go on and continue as a mission. It's already been paid for that $235 million. That's separate. So NASA is gonna go ahead and keep on funding that mission. These are through the Commercial Lunar Payload Services CLIPS program, which is something I talked about in this video up here, if you're interested in checking that out, why NASA is willing to take high risks on these low cost missions. I support the Griffin mission, I support Astrobotic and seeing what they can do, but you don't wanna put a high profile expensive NASA mission on a brand new lander, especially when the previous iteration of the lander just did not make it. However, like I said, I thought they would just move. Viper. I did not know they would cancel it. What now? Viper was an important part of NASA's exploration of a lunar surface, of lunar ice in particular. And this is where my bias comes in because this is something that I really focused on in graduate school, understanding the lunar regolith, understanding the lunar ice environment, looking at in situ resource utilization, ISRU, how we can use the dirt and dust and ice that is on the surface of the moon. And not just ice for the sake of ice, but also breaking it up into hydrogen and oxygen and using those components, how we can use that 
that, how we can understand the science of it and the formation of the moon and the formation of the earth moon system, the formation of our solar system, but also how do we use that for our own human advantages? So using it for, for um, building materials, for fuel, for lots of other things that we need water or hydrogen or oxygen for. There was a mission called Resource Prospector. I was really excited about this mission back in the day. It was essentially built. It was undergoing field testing in 2015. It was undergoing thermal vacuum and thermal testing in 2016. But then in April 2018, it was suddenly canceled. It was not expected to be canceled. A hundred million dollars had already been spent on Resource Prospector, so not nearly as much as Viper. It, it was a smaller mission than Viper. So scientists from LEAK, the Lunar Exploration Analysis Group, actually sent a letter in April to the new NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstein asking him to reverse the decision to cancel it. Now, I have to say this was not Jim Bridenstein's decision or his fault. At the same time this was going on, this cancellation, he was actually being approved by the Senate to become NASA minister the same like the same time period. It was April 19th that he was confirmed by the Senate and signed in as NASA Administrator April 23rd. So all of this was going on at the same time. He's just coming in as NASA Administrator. This was not his decision. I don't know why he couldn't have reversed the decision, but for whatever reason, Resource Prospector was canceled. And the consolation prize that they told us was that the experiments, the, you know, the instruments that were on Resource Prospector were gonna be put on these smaller CLIPS missions. And so when Viper was announced, I was super excited. And I'm like, here is Resource Prospector version version two, where it's even more capable and it's going to do all these things that Resource Prospector was going to do. It's going to help us understand the lunar environment, the lunar regolith, the ice environment, like all these things that we say are important for us for the Artemis program, for lunar exploration, for lunar development. Viper was going to do just that. Viper is not the only mission that was going to do that. Viper was just the most capable mission that was going to do that, that NASA had in the works. There's also a mission called Prime One. It is scheduled to launch on Intuitive Machines IM2. Intuitive Machines, if you remember earlier this year, it landed on the surface of the moon with IM1, but then tipped over. So it was a partial success. IM2 is currently scheduled for later this year. Coincidentally, Incidentally, Intuitive Machines put out an announcement today saying that IM2 is completely sold out. They're hoping to launch it by the end of this year. They have a window of November 2024 to January 2025. That's ideal for them to do this mission, this IM2 mission. So I wish them the best of luck. Prime 1 is a great mission, but it's not as capable as Viper would have been. So Prime 1 is not a rover. It is simply attached to the lander. And it only has two components. It has a drill and a mass spectrometer. And that's it. So I'm excited for Prime 1, but it's not the same thing as Viper. It's not nearly as capable as Viper. And so to say that, you know, Viper is going to be replaced by other additional missions on CLIPS, well, here's an example of one that's going up later this year or early next year that, you know, will help us understand lunar ice in one place, but it, it's not as capable. It can't do what Viper was going to do. These are NASA missions I've been talking about. Viper, Prime One, Resource Prospector. NASA is not the only one in town here. So China has its successful Chang'e program. I will link to a video I did talking about how amazing the Chinese lunar program has been so far for lunar science. Chang'e 7, which is currently scheduled to launch in 2026, it will have an orbiter, a lander, a mini hopping probe and a rover. So all of those components are going to be in Chang'e 7 launching in 2026. And it's also a lunar sample return mission, same as Chang'e 5 and Chang'e 6. And one of its main scientific goals is investigation and study of lunar surface environment and water ice in the soil. So China is really leading the way here. NASA is saying we're going to cancel our lunar mission. China is saying we're going to do this really super ambitious series of lunar missions. And then after Chang'e 7, there's Chang'e 8, which there's not a lot of details yet because it's going to build on what Chang'e 7 does but Chang'e 8 is scheduled for 2028. It will have a lander, a rover, and a robot, and it's going to focus on ISRU. Right now, I would say China is the leader in lunar science, and I'm grateful that somebody's doing it. I mean, you know, as a scientist, I want this science to be done, but I want NASA to be doing it too. I want NASA to be a leader in this area, especially since we have the Artemis program. I did say that Viper could be saved. I do want to talk about what NASA is proposing here. So NASA is saying that it will disassemble Viper and put its components elsewhere. So it already has this completed rover. It's going to take it apart and it's going to put its instruments and other aspects of it on other missions, which, you know, who knows when that will happen? Who knows how capable those other missions will be? 
their alternative proposal is they're asking anybody out there who wants to pay, you know, at no cost to NASA, who can completely pay to take over Viper, you have to let them know by August 1st, which is two weeks from now. So that's a really quick decision for an organization or company or government entity to make. I don't have high hopes for that, but at the same time, I'm like, hey, does, does someone want an already put together lunar rover that's totally capable? Someone with deep pockets, let's say Blue Origin? Probably not gonna happen, but you know, we can hope. Another thing to note is that NASA doesn't get to make these final decisions. Congress is the one who decides the budget and Congress can come back and say, NASA, we don't want you to cancel this mission. In fact, just last month, we had this whole debate with the Chandra X-ray Observatory. I did this video here if you want to watch that. So NASA proposed really significantly cutting Chandra's budget, which would essentially slow cancel the mission. And the scientific community fought back. They said Chandra's doing excellent science and there's no reason to cancel it. There's no reason to cut its budget. There was a letter sent by nine members of Congress, mostly from Massachusetts, where, Chand where Chandra is based. And they all said to NASA, hey, we don't want you to cancel this program. We want you to reverse those cuts. Now, it is Congress's fault that NASA is squeezed in terms of its budget. I do want to point that out. The whole reason why NASA is making these tough decisions about science in general is because Congress has put these caps on NASA's budget. And so in general, this is actually Congress's fault, but Congress can also fix it. Just a couple of weeks ago, the House Science Committee put out their budget proposal, which still needs to pass the full House, still needs to be reconciled with the Senate's budget proposal, the NASA Reauthorization Act of 2024, they said, the committee supports funding for Chandra X-ray Observatory, which continues to deliver discoveries addressing a wide range of questions across astrophysics. So they didn't go ahead and put a specific funding amount in that budget request, but they did express support. I don't know where that's going to go. I don't know if Chandra is going to get that money or not, but NASA doesn't make that final decision. NASA doesn't make that decision about Viper either. And we can see throughout history where Congress has reversed NASA's decisions, or at least given more money than NASA has requested. We see this continuously with NASA programs such as SLS and Orion, where NASA requests a certain amount and Congress gives them a whole lot more. We have also seen NASA reverse decisions after outrage from the scientific community. For example, last year, New Horizons, which is the mission that flew by Pluto, it's still doing great planetary science work. NASA was proposing to close down the, pla the planetary science aspect of that, that team that's been working on New Horizons. They were essentially going to cancel out that budget and give the mission to the heliophysics division to do solar science, which, you know, I think solar science is cool, but I think planetary science is what this mission was made for. And after a lot of pushback, especially by the PI Alan Stern, NASA reversed that decision, at least for now. And so for now, New Horizons is still doing great planetary science. So it really can make a difference. If you're in the United States, you can call your elected representatives and ask them to support Viper and support lunar science. And all of this is vital to the Artemis program. The purpose of the Artemis program, as stated by NASA, is with NASA's Artemis campaign, we are exploring the moon for scientific discovery, technology advancement, and to learn how to live and work on another world as we prepare for human missions to Mars. And Viper ticks off every one of those boxes. We really need to understand every aspect that Viper is going to teach us in order to do what Artemis is planning to do. I'm going to link down below to a thread on X Twitter by Phil Metzger. Phil and I were working together about a dozen years ago when, when Resource Prospector was ongoing. Um, he put down a thread about the cancellation of Resource Prospector and the reasons why we need to do this lunar science. And I also want to quote you an email by Clive Neal, who's an expert in lunar science. In an email today, he said, Viper is the pivotal mission to start getting the data for correctly sitting on the base camp, Artemis base camp, he means. The Artemis program is dramatically affected by not flying a very capable rover that is built and in the middle of testing. This lunar science community is starting to talk, is starting to fight back, and you can fight back too by contacting your elected representatives. I can't tell you that it's going to do any good in an election year, especially when the decision needs to be made pretty quickly here, but it also can't hurt. 